Welcome everyone to today's video. We are going to be talking about uh, my recording settings, in particular with Streamlabs OBS. Now I've had a lot of comments um, asking me to display my settings. Um, I must admit I have never really looked too much into it. Um, I, I know that I know what the basics are. Recording 19, 1920 by 1080. Um, 60 FPS and the quality of my videos are are good not everything is set to maximum but yeah I've done a little bit more research um, personally to put this video together for you guys and I've, uh, I've found some found some good details so hopefully we'll be able to help you guys get that nice decent quality that we're all looking for so to start with the basics now as everyone knows my channel is predominantly filmed in VR sim racing in VR. Now, what people may get a bit confused with is that what is actually recording is not directly from the image that I see within my VR headset. So what you guys are seeing is, yes, what I'm seeing within my headset, but that image is displayed on my monitor in front of me, my primary monitor, which is a 1440p. Uh, ultra HD monitor so the image that is actually being recorded is what's displayed on my monitor now with a VR headset you can't see it can't record both lenses at the same time so it's either left eye prominent or right eye prominent now I believe with my headset it's left eye and um, so that is generally what you're seeing is my left eye um, and what I'm seeing from my left eye is, is the image that you're seeing now the base canvas, as I've said, my Ultra HD monitor, that is the image that is being recorded. Now it is being downscaled into a 1080p resolution because I don't have a streaming PC. I record everything off the same PC, off the same GPU. And even though I have an RTX 2080, a very powerful GPU, one of the uh, most powerful out there at the moment, there's only a couple of levels above it. And that still doesn't allow me to record, display two images at once because I still need my my second monitor um, to display some form of an image, i.e. Streamlabs, and as well as my headset at the same time. That is a lot of processing power for my GPU, a lot of rendering um, that it has to go through. So yeah, unfortunately I cannot record in 1440p. The only way I'd be able to do that is if I had a second monitor, um, a second GPU or a uh, or a streaming streaming PC one day not just of yet um, I keep it at 16 samples that that gives me a nice decent image um, integer FPS value and um, so that it just allows you to determine it's just one by one basically uh, frame so I could turn it up to 61 frames 59 you can change it to um, fractional so 55.5 frames if you want like a specific frame value because a lot of the time if you're struggling if to get a decent image quality or you're getting stuttering within your recording um it's probably because your gpu is at maximum and there's no little room for it to to, to record so what you have to do is it's kind of playing around with the settings or works in, works in correlation with the settings within the sim that you're racing. So for iRacing for particular, um, I don't have, I limit the frames to 80 frames per second because that's what my headset can reach as a maximum. There's no point me leaving it at 144 maximum frames because yes, the image that, it, that will be displayed on my monitor will be 144 frames. But that's no benefit. That's of no benefit to me because I'm I'm racing on my headset, and um, and what that will do is that there's so much rendering that is happening with your GPU, so much that it's doing, it just won't have enough power to do it. So the only way for it to cope with processing all these images is to miss frames, skip frames, and that's what you get with stuttering. So we get over to the advanced settings. This is where all these settings are gonna make a big difference to your image quality. So you need to get these 
right. Of course, they're going to be um, subject to what GPU you have and to the power of your of your PC. Um, just to let you guys know, I have an RTX 2080, so one of it's a high-end graphics card. Uh, so some of these set, these settings, obviously, set to me, they will vary depending on um, on what graphics card you have. Uh, so we head over to output on the left hand side and go over to the recordings tab. Now as we come down the first couple of settings are pretty basic um, there's only one type which is standard. Recording path is where you want to save your videos, uh, what folder. MP4 is just a standard, standard video format, audio track, leave it one. Now as we scroll down, as we get to recording and down, this is where it's a little bit more juicier. Now, there are three encoder settings under the recordings tab, and that is X264, NVENC, and NVENC New. Now, I use NVENC New as this is the encoder specifically used for NVIDIA graphics cards and created by NVIDIA. This was released, this is a more highly optimized and newer version of the NVENC encoder and um, that they released in conjunction with the RTX cards coming out which was the, which is their new model of cards so if you have an NVENC, uh, NVENC if you have an NVIDIA graphics card click NVENC new because what this does this uses your GPU to render and create frames and images rather than your CPU which is what SX264 does X264 uses your CPU and you don't want to put too much stress on your CPU. It is the brain of your PC. It's very small and for something so small it costs a lot of money. So you don't want to, to burn that out and put too much stress and pressure on it because it will just fry, fry it. Um, well, consistent use will just fry it. Um, I don't want to scare people, um, but yeah, consistent use will just fry it, and you don't. It costs a lot of money to replace, and unless you're uh, unless you've got a lot of money put behind, um, you, you don't want to be doing that. Uh, there are some. It was a great website, a oh, well, great uh, link actually that I will put in the description below that Nvidia have on their website, and it is a recording streaming guide, OBS guide. Um, I will quickly show you it at the end of the video um, and it explains exactly what all these settings are, what they do and it goes into so much more detail than I'll, poss I'll ever be able to, to go into. So definitely worth giving it a read over. Now as we move on we have constant bitrate. This is what CBR stands for. Uh, this I, I like to have this at constant bitrate because I don't like the data that's being transferred, that's what bitrate does, it's at the level of data that is transferred across, I don't like it, like it to fluctuate because that can affect my my frames per second, um, it can affect the, how much power is being used through the GPU and I just know that I'm going to get a good image quality as I'm currently doing at this moment in time. Now Nvidia says you can use a variable bitrate um, of up to 40 to 60,000. Um, as you can see, I've got this set to 15,000, which is what um, is YouTube's recommended, I believe. And a higher bit rate, technically speaking, should give you a better image quality. But what it does, it also increases the site, the file size. Um, so, as a as a base example, um, where a 10-minute video would be one gigabyte it goes up to two and a half, nearly three gigabytes. But I, techni and technically speaking, that should give me a better image quality, but all it does is give me a increased file size that takes longer to render and edit and upload onto YouTube. It just adds to inconvenience. And I didn't see, um, I didn't see a, an increase in image quality, so it just wasn't worth it. So I leave that at 15,000. Um, yet again, probably one to play around with. If you don't have an RTX 2080 graphics card, I would try turning that down um, and seeing 
if that creates if that creates a better image quality for you um, and it should take less stress off of your GPU because you're transferring less data over. Now keyframe interval I have set at zero. Um, I've never played around with this setting. Zero works for me. Presets, now the preset I have is for max quality. Um, I want the best image that can possibly be displayed and recorded, hence why I have this at max quality. You can maybe put it down to quality, which is higher quality, um, if you're if you're struggling um, to get a, a good FPS um, and, you, and you're suffering stuttering within your videos, maybe turn it down to quality because you don't likewise, all of these settings work within conjunction of the settings within your sim racing, um, within the game that you're playing. Um, you may not be able to have all of these settings set to max or to high, just like within just within sim any game, you can't have all the shadows set up to higher because it takes so much puts up so much pressure and processing power on your GPU that there is no room left for your GPU to to, to produce produce an image and to produce frames. And the only way that you can do that is by skipping frames which is then where you get the stuttering and you get the jumps within the image. Now, as we move down, I have the profile set to high, which is what NVIDIA recommends. You should never have it at main or baseline. Um, look ahead, I have this unchecked. This is mainly should be checked for slow moving games like Minecraft or Total War games. Um, sim racing is not a slow game it's very fast paced the, the world around you is forever moving you are always moving um, so you want this unchecked this works in relation to maximum b frames um, so yeah leave leave that unchecked psycho visual tuning i would admit i don't really know what this is um, i didn't know this even existed before <laughs> before i kind of did this video um, in video i say it's you leave it checked because it highly optimizes the image um, and gives you a better image quality. So I'm going to take their word for it. Uh, and it's it's been always been ticked. I'm going to leave it ticked. GPU, now GPU um, is, if you had two GPUs, you'd maybe have this set of two. Um, I don't know why this isn't set at one. It's because I've only got one GPU anyway. So it's just always been set at zero. It's just the, the baseline. Nvidia says even if you do have two GPUs, you don't want to set this to two because the the encoder is optimized to work from one GPU anyway, or to to optimize the image. I don't know all the specific details behind it. And then maximum B frames, I have set at two, which is also um, I think most people will find is a standard um, for the majority of games and. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, when it comes to recording video and so forth, it's not. Even though I'm into my technology, it's it's definitely a field that I need to increase my knowledge on. Um, I know kind of the basics. As I stated earlier on, let's have a look at the Nvidia link that I was telling you about. So as I'm halfway down the page here, and this is their OBS guide, their recordings guide. Definitely worth a look at. It will be in the link below in the description. And it has breaks down exactly what each of those settings is. Um, yep, as I just stated, look, psycho visual tuning checked. This enables the rate distortion optimization in the encoder. Optimizes the way you use bitrate. Uh, improving image quality on movement so yes yeah, a, a lot to do with with optimization um, this goes into a lot more detail graphs um, explanations here of why the Nvidia encoder is much better than x264 definitely worth looking and plan around with but yeah please use my use my settings as a guide. These work for me. I know a lot of you guys have been um, asking to see them. 
I'll try and answer as many questions as I can in the um, in the comments below. I am going to go away and I'm going to do a lot more research into this as well. Um, but yeah, you guys seem to be happy with the image, the quality of image that I'm recording and producing. And long may that continue. I hope I can get you guys producing good video images too and good recordings too. And I hope this helps. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button, guys. See you again soon. Bye.